now, I mean, I'm going to draw conclusions, I'll, I'll tell you a few stories too, but we basically know enough now that no sentient beings should be consumed, should be worn, should be used in research, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we just know that. And so, to be quite honest, I do, my whole career has been doing field work, wild animals and coyotes, wolves, free-ranging dogs, birds, and most of the people who diminish other animals have never watched animals outside of these little impoverished, horribly small cages. So, I mean, for example, I know that wolves, when they co cooperatively hunt, have a theory of mind. I know that they know what's going on in the minds of other wolves in their group. So, doing the studies like Andrew was talking about and others where chimpanzees watch somebody hide food and then they do all these. Chimpanzees don't do that in the wild. So from the fact that they can't perform certain captive experiments doesn't mean jack blank about who they are and their cognitive abilities. We really need to um, pay attention to that because like I said this morning, we're discovering all these fascinating things about animals who we have called, quote, lower. Lower usually means less valuable rather than higher. And who does the categorization? It's humans. And we place ourselves on the top of the ladder. Okay, so. I've watched elephants in Kenya help one another. It's, it's amazing to read about these stories. It's fascinating to see wild elephants help one another, wait for an injured elephant, and feed her when she cannot um, walk. If she were left alone, she'd be prey to a lion or other predator in a heartbeat. Um, I had a dog named Jethro who was famous for rescuing birds and baby bunnies. I lived in the mountains outside of Boulder, and my nearest neighbors are black bears and cougars and coyotes, and they, they like to eat bunnies. That's what they do, unfortunately. So Jethro would rescue them, bring them home, and then sit by them with me. So there's a lot of compassion across um, species. And the last example, which is fascinating, I was riding my bicycle back into Boulder once, and I came around the corner, and there was a dead magpie in the road with four or five magpies around the corpse, and I stopped, I was with a friend, who knows nothing about animal behavior because I could embellish it, but one magpie went in, pecked at the corpse, stepped back, another did the same. One flew off, brought back pine needles and leaves for the twigs, put it by the corpse, another did, another did, and then they all stood around the animal, the corpse, bowed their heads imperceptibly and flew off. And so when I published this, people thought I was on drugs, or, <laughs> which might not have been a bad assessment, except, or they attribute it to being living at altitude. Um, but since then, I've had you know, probably 75 emails from people having seen these sorts of ceremonies. So, so the bottom line that I'll leave you with is that we're, we're learning more and more about you know, non-human animal beings. They are fully sentient. Lab work on these animals is extremely limited in scope. They're studying animals who have been born in captivity, living in small social groups, in horribly impoverished conditions, asking them to do totally unnatural things. And one of the arguments I've had with people is asking animals in laboratories to do totally unnatural things is akin to asking dolphins and whales to do stupid unnatural tricks in aquariums. It really is. And that's not to criticize my scientific colleagues, many of whom have the best interests of the animals in mind, but to say that asking animals to do stupid things in laboratories doesn't tell you how they, how they evolved in their natural groups. So the global moral imperative that I'm looking for would be first do no harm, respect all life, treat all individuals with compassion, and step very lightly into their lives and their habitats, and the subtitle of the book I published last year, it's called the, um, Six Reasons for Expanding Our Compassion Footprint. So that's just an idea I'm working on very actively, is expanding our compassion footprint. So with due respect, so that Karen can finish, I thank you all for coming.